Moaning. Moaning. Ah, hostage here. Mm. Am I going to do? Oh, hang on. I didn't turn it down. See, I weren't ready. Right, let's do it again. Let's again. Morning. Our hostage here, and we're going to do another live. Well, it's Friday morning, and blimey, it's all been happening overnight. We're off to the races on many fronts. And first of all, let's get into it, shall we? That what has happened since midnight? Well, we only did a live last night late and we were debating what was going to happen. And it look, looks like it is because initially, right, this is when the news was breaking. So you'll get it in chronological order. Oil prices surged by over 3% amid Israeli airstrikes on Iran. Video purportedly from Isfahan, Iran, documenting their anti-aircraft fire. Israeli missiles hit a site in Iran, according to ABC, citing a senior U.S. official. And Isfahan is where one of the most um, sensitive nuclear sites is, Located. Plus, is this an allied response? Because we're being told it's just the Israelis, but were there any um, allied assistance? Unconfirmed, it was then Iraqi sources report that airstrikes in the capital city of Baghdad have targeted a building where a high level meeting was being held with the presence of several groups supported by Iran and members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Now, can we put a pin in that? They're not talking about that yet. But um, the Iraqi sources are saying a building, just like in Damascus, a building in Iraq, right, where there was a meeting with high-level commanders, right, has been levelled. So at the moment, right, um, multi-country response, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Beirut next. There are reports coming in from many countries, right, of explosions. Now, we don't know what the cause of those. Some of them might not be missiles or drones or airstrikes. And to be honest with you, right, we might wonder whether the Israeli um, response is over. And yes, it might be daylight now, but there are other things that could happen. Sabotage. We could have a bit of sabotage, right, a bit of espionage. Right, sabotage and espionage could be the follow-up. Breaking news, Israel was conducted missile strikes on Iran. And me being a little bit sort of um, cynical, right, with what's being reported. So Iran launches missiles that hit the desert. And Israel retaliates by taking out Iran's 50-year-old Tomcats. Right, got it. There is some choreography going on here. However, there's always room for mistakes. But really, over the last seven days, what we've seen, right, is unprecedented. Right, the fact that Israel killed a top Iranian general in the consulate in Damascus, the fact that Iran, right, directly attacked Israel, and now Israel has directly responded. So if that's not ratcheting it up, right, I'm, I don't know what is. And whilst it might be you can hit this and you can hit that, right, there's room there for mistakes. And by the way, right, listen, you won't hear this very many places, right? But I checked it out. Today is the Iranian, Iran's supreme leader, Khomeini's birthday. He was born in 1939. 
Right now, you might see it pop up in the news later, right? But I've done my research. Today is the birthday of the Supreme Leader of Iran. And what happened was the market dumped, right, and then rebounded as Israel retaliates to Iran in an oddly toothless performative response. But then again, we haven't got, we ain't got the total. Um, what has actually happened at the moment, it's speculation. Explosions in Isfahan at an air base which houses the 50-year-old Tomcats, took out, I don't know, half a dozen of them. There are also reports of explosions from around Iraq, Syria. There was um, sirens going off in northern Israel, so another lot of missiles from Hezbollah from Lebanon. And as you know, the, the media wants to play it down, right? The media turns the tap on and turns it off. When there's a big event, like on 9-11, they turned it up, right, to maximum volume, overemphasising, and, right, and yes, it was bad, 9-11, right, but they would sort of, like, make it, you know, give it as possible. This one, right, they're trying to tamp it down. Each time they're saying, right, is that it then? What's Because the, what is going to be the Iranian response? And to be honest with you, right, I wonder whether the Israeli response is not finished yet. That after this first wave, there could be cyber attacks, there could be sabotage, there could be espionage. And, right, and if that proves to be correct, that the Israelis have hit a building in Baghdad, where there was going to be another meeting of senior Iranian commanders and Hezbollah and who else, Right, the news might emerge later today that uh, right more top commanders have been killed. <clears throat> Kinahans are any news of them? Well, the last right, the last thing right after the rainstorms the other day, right, was Daniel Kinahan was seen doing the backstroke down the high street in Dubai, closely followed right by Christy Kinahan. He was in the dinghy, right. And the dinghy was being pulled along by Sean McGovern and Bernard Clancy. No, there's no news about um, the Kinnahans, really. It's all, again, it's all being choreographed. It's all being choreographed. And do you know what? Another thing on the Kinnahans, what we could say, was that the Kinnahans wanted to get out of the business in 2019 and wanted to just be sort of advisors, right? And... Though the powers that be went, no, we want you to carry on hands on. So it might be another case. The Kinnahan said, just as we thought we was out, they pull us back in. Yes, that'd be a turn up for the book, wouldn't it? If it all comes out that the Kinnahans were leaving the complete cartels and everything behind, they delegated it out and went, listen, we're going semi legit, just like Michael Colleone in The Godfather, and they were going to go legit. But that weren't no good to the authorities because they wanted the Kinnahans to continue to supply the global supply. So just as they thought they was out, they were pulled back in. Because remember the James English interview with Daniel Kinnahan, he released the preview. It was about to go out at the end of the week and at the beginning of the week in that April 2022, the 11th, I think it was, the big conference at the big Announcement in Dublin by the American ambassador of US sanctions, $5 million on each head and all that stuff. Well, that's all very well, but they haven't got them in the two years because, no, they want to keep the flow of stuff coming through. And there was no one better that organising it than the Kinnahans. I know it's a crazy idea, but we've got to take on board everything, especially when we talk about the Kinnahans that they wanted to uh, right, step out of the uh, business in on a certain level. Yes, keep the koala and the money going through and all that, but they were strictly hands-off. And the fact that the sanctions came may, meant that they had to get back into it hands-on. 
And who knows what people's agendas are and what people's motives are. But one thing we do know, because of the demand, there has to be supply, a constant supply. And as the demand's gone up, right, the supply needs to continue to go with it. Because the last thing that governments and authorities want around the world is a drought. It's, um, it's not a question of, right, they won't be caught and they're evading capture. It's a, because, to be honest with you, once they locate them, if they were wanted that bad by America, why don't they send in, right, two black hawks, surround the building they're in, flashbangs, drag them out on the helicopter straight to the airport and fly them to America? Or even, right, just assassinate them. That's if they were wanted so much. It makes you wonder. I certainly believe that this is, there is definitely espionage involved in with the Kinahans, with the Hawala system, and they've been feeding the security services information on stuff in the Middle East. And, right, and their reward for that was to be allowed to continue to build the cartel. And just like many people in history, right, when they tried to walk away and say that's the end of it, they were told they couldn't or they put sanctions on them. Not put sanctions on them because they were running a cartel. No, put sanctions on them because they threatened to stop running the cartel. But getting back to the Israel thing, we don't know, you see. We were speculating that they might wait until after Passover, but that might be a double bluff, and it turns out it was. Because um, Benjamin Netanyahu said after the last Saturday's attack that he wants the people of Israel to have a peaceful Passover, which led to speculation they might leave it to the end of next week after Passover. Then all of a sudden, right, a quick one too, on the Friday before, right, which coincides with the prayer day, right, so that's another middle finger, right, but the biggest middle finger that no one's talking about now and which will be taken as a personal insult is today is the birthday of the Supreme Leader of Iran, right, Khomeini. So what a birthday present he's been given. And you laugh and all that stuff. Listen, part of strategy is um, psychology, right? Is, you know, get into his head. Now the Israelis are living rent-free in Khomeini's head because on his birthday they've responded. All these little tiny bits of the puzzle, you see. All these tiny bits of the puzzle, right? You join them all together. And it don't matter on what level you um, talk about these things and try to analyse them, right? It's all the same because we're all humans and it's human nature, right? So whether it's on the level of Biden, Netanyahu and the Khomeini from Iran or whether it's on the level of the street level, right? It's all the same in many ways. And, 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 and the diplomats that run around um, in those circles at the top, there are people who try to sort of calm situations, even on Zootube. There are people who go, look, calm it down, you lot, and all that. It never works, so never works. And I mean, to be honest, with the Kinahans, I think that there will be a negotiation where all of a sudden they throw him Sean McGovern because there is an international arrest warrant out for him for um, for the murder of Duck of of Noel Duck Egg Kerwin. 
And all this talk about the DEA might file charges against Daniel Kinahan and the Kinahans before the Irish press charges again. It's all window dressing. So, as I say, obviously this news is going to be dominating throughout the day and any follow-ups, but we've got him right in early. I mean, as it was dropping, I thought, here we go. And then, right, I will say it, right, but it was funny. Right, I felt I was sitting here creasing up with laughter, right? Because, right, there was a reunion of Losers United, right? Because that's what they're called collectively, Losers United, YouTube failures, right? Headed by their standard bearer, right? Plastic Paddy, who shaved his beard off. Okay, so all of a sudden, right, they've got a live, the Holy War is going to start, meaning a reference to they were, right, the second wave of attacks and fights with Art Hostage and now Zoe as well are going to commence. So, right, it was meant to be midnight, then 10 past, then it was 20 past 12. So they come on. They, yes. you got Paddy on there, right? You've got. Who was the other one? You had, oh, Darren was on there as well. And then there was someone else on there. I can't remember who it was. Anyway, right, so they were there and they were ready to go with all their ammunition and ready to go. Right, so then Darren, right, started to go off, right? It was difficult to understand him, right? But anyway, it doesn't matter, right? And so, all right, they all started to attack our hostage and Zoe. And this is going to happen, and, it, and right, and for the first time, right, Steve, right, admitted, right, that he's been destroyed and distraught at losing his channel, and that now, right, because his new channel's only got hundred and odd subscribers, he doesn't care. So now he's gonna he's gonna go for it big time, right? So this time, honestly, that's what that's the way it started. Then, right, it quickly fizzled out because what happened was in the comments was all the old losers, all the old failures, right, all congregated, and it was almost like a reunion, reunion of the trolls. So initially, they all focused on attacking Zoe Gilday, attacking our hostage. But that quickly fizzled out and they ran out of things to say. And guess what happened next? Well, we all know what's going to happen next. Yes. They then started to attack each other in the comments. It was it was a sight to see. You could see all the people that hate each other were all trying to come together in the comments. Right, here we go. We're going to fight a holy war against our hostage and Zoe. Quite quickly, they ran out of things to say. They ran out of things to, to attack with, right? And then next thing, we move on to them all starting to attack each other. And people were trying to keep order and the mods were removing comments and, and it was it was funny. I just thought it was really funny. And as I say, I wrote in the um, the comments here, Plastic Paddy had a reunion, Losers United, then launched an attack last night, and like the Iranians, 99% of it failed completely, miserable. Honestly, if that was meant to be a concerted attack on Zoe and myself, our hostage, that's the weakest most absurd, stupid, childish, juvenile attack I've ever seen. It was an embarrassment. It was an embarrassment of trolls. It was an embarrassment of people who roast people. 
Far from being a roast, they made themselves look stupid, which they've done from day one. These people, right, are, are forever losers, right? Losers. They've all been on YouTube, right, since 2016, 18, 20, right? They've never got any traction. They've never got anywhere. And then the funny thing was they started to go into what their plans are going to be going forward. I do like this. It's what I call this time next year we'll be millionaires, right? You know, when they talk rubbish. Because, yes, the um, live over there went back to how it used to be in the old days. A lot of low IQ, low intellect people talking rubbish, getting facts wrong, getting everything wrong. saying that Trump made a deal with Iran. He never made a deal with Iran and all kinds of things like that, right? Completely uninformed, ill-informed, complete and utter wrong. And what they were talking about there in the comments was rubbish, right? You couldn't come away learning anything from it because none of, right, most of it, they got it wrong. Didn't get the facts right. And then you get people coming in boasting, oh, I used to do this, I did that, and I did this, right? When it's complete and utter nonsense, right? Whenever as a subject, you get people coming, oh, yeah, I did this, oh, I met him once, I met him once, right? Trying to get involved in the story when it's not true. I mean, why do people have to do that? And we saw some old faces reappear. And to be honest with you, a year later, they're exactly the same as they were then. Little pests, that's all they are, cockroaches. And then we were told that, the, you know, the great big professional studio that, that everyone watched be built with all the soundproofing and the fancy microphones and all that, and hell, right, the new channel was going to go through the roof, it was a new setup. well, that's all going now, right, that's all being dismantled. That's all being dismantled. Any notions of anything, a decent channel. Oh, the next thing is I'm going to produce an, a video once a month is what he said. It's going to be highly polished. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. Yes, I know, Shay, he was there as well. And it was just like it was about 18 months ago. A load of idiots, right? A load of ill-informed, uneducated, low IQ idiots trying to speak about big issues Right, or, or just speak in general. Honestly, I never realised how stupid they are. I, I really didn't, because, you know, we haven't seen this. But they but they all gathered there last night. All of them. All of them gathered. And they're going to him, they're going, I'll do the research for you. Yeah, OK, let's do a live together. I'll do the research. And all. Yes, OK, and we could do this and we polish it. And all. Do you know what I mean? All that nonsense. Listen, let me get it clear once and for all here. I will never promise you that I'm going to be going doing this. I'm interviewing them and the channel's going to have bells and whistles. All I will promise you is, is tomorrow I'll do another live and we'll have another chat. That's all you're going to get from me. All these delusions of grandeur, right, that these people have had, right, for years, year in, year out. It's the same old story. That, yeah, this is our plans for the future. We're going to do this. We're going to edit that. We're going to do this. Yeah, we're going to do that. And all this. <laughs> we'll really shut up, will you? Talking nonsense, because that's what they were. And all, but to be honest, as I say, I mean, YouTube's a big tent room for all, but it's nice to see them all back together again, all of the idiots coming back, because that's what they are. And I'm not just calling them that, by their own actions and their words and their behaviour.
But yes, as regards an attack, okay, it was like the Iranians completely and utterly a failure. Just like their attacks have been failures for two years. They get small little victories when they cause me a, right, a bit of disruption. But that's as far as they've got. And now this channel is ring-fenced. 14 days wait before you can comment as a subscriber and Zoe Gilday as the moderator, right? They've been losing their mind. They can't get near the channel. So what are they doing? They're trying to complain on other channels. And now all of a sudden they finally convinced him, right, to start attacking again. And, and so I feel that there might be a Burner Channel episode coming on very shortly, maybe tomorrow night. We might have to do a Burner Channel late one tomorrow night, have the streaming and all that game. But today's early one, right, it's got nothing to do with the idiots. No, of course it ain't, right? It's, it, it's to do with the um, Iran being the response from Israel towards Iran. But I couldn't, you know, it don't matter me talking about it just for five minutes. But honestly, right, I, I mean, to be honest, I'm glad I weren't part of that so-called attack last night because it was the worst, embarrassing, humiliating roast of all time. I didn't feel roasted whatsoever. I was sitting back laughing because they were all playing the victim. Coming in saying this, all oh, this happened to me and that happened to me and all this. And then we got a, right, you know what I mean, the usual suspects. Oh, I've got my papers. They're all going to be doing this. Been saying that for nine months. Right, do you know what I mean? Honestly. It's embarrassing. It was so embarrassing, right, honestly. They humiliated themselves. And by the end of it, even the host himself said, to be honest, I don't want any more of this fighting. Right, I'm not going to be doing this anymore. So, right, came out all guns blazing. There's going to be a concerted attack to destroy Art Hostage and Zoe once and for all. And by the end of the podcast, it was uh, uh, right the host when I don't really want to get involved in none of this. I've had enough of it. You know, what we do is I'm just going to do this, that and the other. We do the UFOs. I'll come back and do this and all that game. Right? What's the matter with them? It's stupid. You know, they can't win. They will never win. Right? I mean, despite the fact that I always win, I always do. Right? Despite that, right, the reason they can't win is because they end up fighting each other. And they end up destroying themselves. That was evident right from the original big channel being taken down. And they're all scurrying round now, recording. And they're all thinking, right, we've got the green light to go and attack our hostage and Zoe and all of this stuff, right? Well, let them do what they want. This channel's ring-fenced. If this channel goes, oh, I'll be so upset. No, it would just be an inconvenience because we've we've cast aside those shackles of monetization, of worrying about subscribers, views, clicks, and all of that stuff. So as I say, morning quiet man. Tony Kelly, Shay. This might be a bit early for a few people, Zoe included, because Zoe did pop in with one comment, right? And she just tore a strip off them. One comment, and then it was deleted, right? But it was right tip of the spear. She went, you're all obsessed with our hostage. What, if it wasn't for him, you'd have nothing to talk about. And to be honest, right, really, what it actually was, it was a collective meltdown, a collective meltdown, right, about our hostage and Zoe. Earlier on today, one of the trolls, right, came into um, one of the channels and said, Art hostage, I'll offer you a deal. 
if you block Zoe Gilday, I will call off all of the trolls against you. I can do that because they all listen to me. I wrote back and went, go on, up you go, off you go, you mug. You mug. You nobody. Right, the worst thing, right, the two worst thing, right, the greats on them every single day is, first of all, I am prolific. So they know that I'm going to have a new episode every day, some days two, even three. And the second thing, right, which bugs them every day is the fact that this channel is now ring-fenced and they can't get near it. So let's see what else has been going on. Let's see if we can find any other news that's breaking regards Iran. Yeah, someone mentioned this. Happy birthday, 85-year-old young man. The hope supporter and helper of the oppressed. Oh, really? Yeah. It's his birthday, isn't it? Hey, what a birthday present for the um, for Khomeini. But regardless that these are limited, right, attacks and responses and things, right? As I say, there's, there's scope for something to go wrong. And the fact that the attacks actually happened from Iran to Israel directly, right, is a red line that, that people for decades have said, if that ever happened, it would be World War Three. Now we've seen the attack directly from Israel on Iran, Again, people for decades would have said that would be World War Three. So that's where we stand. And it's all right for people talking it down and talking it down, but we're walking a very fine line. So anyway, right, I just thought I'd come back and let you know on that one. I don't know where Zoe is. Maybe Zoe's asleep. Not up yet, because it's only up past six. I ain't been to bed yet, because I got up last night when I brought you the last one. And there are other things that are breaking as well, right, which now go on the back burner. A masked gunman who shot at a car on busy London street in gang dispute is convicted. His name is Ricardo Anderson. What's the odds he's black? Right, open fire on Park Lane in Tottenham last May in what police said was a gang dispute. Well, I would have, there's a photograph of him. Yeah, I was right. 21, he is. I'll look at him. Yeah, honestly. He was found guilty of possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life. What did he get? Let's have a look. He's now set to be sentenced on the 22nd of May.
15 years. I don't think he will get as long as that. He might do. But what he'll do is he'll have mitigation of how he's got a loving family and he's a very good footballer, okay, and all of this stuff. And hang on, let me just see if I can find you this story. trying to find a story for you. There you are. Right, is is right here is a story, right? Coming from America. They keep trying, don't they? Hang on, where is it? So, as I say, um, yeah, that's it. He looks after his grandmother and all that game. Yeah, we know what, what's going to happen. And in America, right, there was um, an African-American, right, got out of a car, started shooting at the police. The police returned fire and killed him. His family were outside the police station with a big photograph of him. His mum was crying and, and she was fainting and all that. Right, they wanted another George Floyd moment, right, so that they could claim millions of dollars so they can spend it on hair gel and fried chicken. We've seen it before. But the public won't fall for it again. The public won't fall for it again. We stood for it last time, but we ain't staying it for it again. So, in, so expect the attacks, right, um, to increase. Expect other channels where you'll find these trolls to start. They're getting confidence now. They're coming out of their shell. And they're just as vile as they were before. Because, to be honest, some that came back tonight, right, they haven't missed a step in their comment style, which most of it is, right, irrelevant absurd nonsense right or the attacks and they all think oh look we're up and running again we can start attacking our hostage as a unit again well let's see what happens come ahead come ahead But as I say, it was all very predictable. The so-called attack was one of the um, one of the uh, weakest I've ever seen. Here, here goes the phone. I guess who that is going to be? Hello. Hey. Oh yeah. Okay then. Thanks very much. Okay then, bye-bye. Bye-bye then. No, 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 listen. No, listen. No, you see, what happened, you see, they couldn't hold back, could they? Right, all you, all you losers, all you losers came on last night and made yourself look idiots. You made yourself look... Sh no, in fact, Tank, no, hang on, Tom Joe. You actually stood apart from them and said, look, don't keep doing this. I'm only responding to what happened earlier. You've been trying to keep the peace and I agree with you. Right, and everyone's listening to you now on the live. Tom Joe from Dublin uses the name Tank Inc and he's tried to keep the peace. But unfortunately, it all come apart last night. 
What about what? What about Zoe? Nothing about Zoe. What do you mean, what about Zoe? What, what? You can't see what, what has that got to do with anything? It's got nothing to do with anything, you see. And, and again, um, I would say, though, when you'll agree with, with me on this tank, wouldn't you? It was the weakest, worst attack on, or roast I've ever seen. And then, right, they stopped talking about me and Zoe and started attacking each other. So it was very predictable, wasn't it? No, they don't care. Well, listen, for people that don't care, why did they all go on there and start again last night? Yeah, sorry, I can't understand that. Can you say it again? That the person who done the hundred and thirty-two comments. Yeah, who? That was. Really? But you know, but you have her put in a box so very well done. Because you're afraid of him. Really? Yeah. It's honestly, I can't... Yeah, but I can't understand how you people think. I can't uh, where your brain thinks that. But anyway, nice to talk to you. You can come on the Burner channel. I'll put the link out over the weekend. Oh, I love that. But the Zoe fella has to come on too. Well, okay. I'll have a word with Zoe. Thanks a lot then, Tom Joe. If oh. he comes on, I'll come on. Yeah, listen, Tom Joe, your heart... Yeah, listen, your high voice. Has anyone said that you sound like Tom Slab Murphy? That's true. Right, well, I don't know about Tom, but Tom's got a very high-pitched voice, just like you. Yeah, he really has. Honestly, ask any Republican you know who's ever heard Tom Sad Murphy speak, and they will say to you, right, that he's got a very, very high-pitched voice. Well, you might be. Well, then you should know that. I'm not talking about his brother Frank or his sister and his sister's boys, Aidan, and that they're doing really well because he's told them, he said, stay away from crime. We've got enough money to be legit now. So they went and bought a load of land in Varna in Bulgaria and they're in the um, in business. No, honestly, they're, they're legit, they are. So thanks very much. Bye-bye. So there is Tom Joe. Tom Joe from Dublin. He uses the account Tank Inc. And he, you heard from, from, from the mouth of Tom Joe, he's been trying to keep the peace. But it all seemed to explode. But to be honest with you, and to be fair to Paddy last night, he was a reluctant attacker last night. You could see. You could see that the, the, the reluctance was there. He came out guns blazing for about 15 minutes, and by the end of the live, he was declaring that there was no need to keep fighting. There was no point, that there will be no winners. It will be stupid, as it was before. And other channels, right, like um, um, what they do is they would call up the previous live and be playing it in front of you and then keep pressing pause and critique it. I don't do that. Right, the other video right earlier is still up there. Right, it's not been deleted. It's still up there. Okay, now I could go over there, bring it up to you and then start pausing, stop, start and all of that and critiquing it, but I don't do that. What for? Without a shadow of a doubt, right? And it's not anything I've done, or Zoe, but Zoe Gilday and Art Hostage live rent-free in their heads. I don't know why. And the fact is, is that because they can't get any direct jabs or anything in, it's, it's driving them crazy. They're howling at the moon. Because this channel's ring-fenced, right, and they can't get in, and when they do, it's one comment and they're gone, okay, they are furious. 
and right and Tom Joe was trying to say that that Zoe Gilday put in a hundred and thirty two comments. When in fact two days previous there was a subscriber who was blocked who went crazy in their own name before I blocked them with exactly the same comments. And then the next day when the 132 came, they were identical. So we know who it was. It was the previous person's opened a new account. But that's how crazy they are. They honestly think that Zoe's going to sit there and write 132 comments attacking me, right, so that we can, for some ulterior motive, And anyone who knows Zoe, that if Zoe wrote comments, they'd be a great big paragraph. But the person who was writing those comments, right, was having a psychotic episode. You can imagine, da 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 da, -da and I think this send. Oh no, I forgot I've something else I want to say. And you are hostage and Zoe, I was da 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 da, send. Oh, and oh, and I forgot this as well, and send 132. And as you notice, right, I don't say I know this about someone, I know that about someone. When I've spoken to someone, when they've been supporting me, I've, I've found out these things and I've saved them up and now I can reveal all the truth about this person and that person. You don't hear me say that. And you know what? I'm not going to do it because it's not the way I roll. It's not the way that I play the game. All I do is defend myself when I'm attacked. Throwing things out there that, that you found out about people, their shortcomings and problems and this, that and the other, right? To me, that's what they do, not what I'll do. So for the record, right, that Tom Joe, right, was in there as Tank Inc. And he was trying to tell them to calm down and stop attacking. Let's change the subject. But they had the bit between their teeth. And then they calmed down, started talking about other things. But then all of a sudden, right, um, someone else would pop up on the channel, right, Hagrid, right, with a great big beard, right, and then start screaming about me again. Honestly, these people are not like, right. Some of them have got problems and some of them have got addiction problems. That's all I'm prepared to say. Right. Addiction problems over decades. And some of them might right, um, um, right, might not be addicted to the original stuff, the brown or whatever. Right. And, but they take a substitute and they have to go and get their substitute stuff. Right. Um, once every day down the chemist. Or every three days they get enough and they have to take it, right? You know what I mean? And that's why these people are like that. When they come on, they sound like they're they're half gouching or they're, they're you know, they can't um, get out their sentences or they can't articulate that well. And that is not, not very good when you can't articulate well when you're stone cold sober, let alone when you're under the influence of substitute medicine for addicts. But as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go into things like that because it's not the way I roll. And you have to remember, people do tell me things, right? And most of it, I just, you know, it goes over my head because, you know, I'm not really interested, right? But if you want to know about scandal and that, people can't wait to tell me um, things that are going on. And it does keep me up to date, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to broadcast it. But it's, um, I mean, I mean, it was funny because that disgruntled subscriber the other day, right, said, I'm now blocked, right? He said, I knew this would happen. So from the beginning, I started to screenshot and I've got 1,600 screenshots. These are the kind of people we're dealing with. 
And it was nice to see them all together last night, right in their base, right at their headquarters. However, I detected that the host, right, hasn't got the heart, hasn't got the energy, hasn't got the wherewithal, right, to start fighting again. I might be wrong, but as I say, bring it on, honestly, come ahead, come ahead. Go on, start producing your videos. You can do what you want, if that's what's going to make you happy, but I don't think it is. And you know, in the end, right, that... that you're all turn on each other, and it'll all end the same way as it did last time. There'll be fallings out, and there'll be people not talking. And invariably, right, the channel might go down. Well, it won't matter because it's only a tiny channel now, right? But you saw what happened first time, right? And the outcome won't be any different, and it won't be a game. It won't be anything I do. I could just stand back and watch it all unfold. I'll address it when it needs to be addressed, which is fine, and ignore it when it needs to be ignored. We can do burner channel where we can go right into one, but again, how many times have we done a burner channel episode, and after 10, 15 minutes, we run out of things to say because it gets boring, doesn't it? And then we move on to more mainstream things. That was proved when I had that lovely four-and-a-half-hour conversation between Wednesday night and Thursday morning with Quimba. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So it's absurd. But again, you know, if that's the way... But you could see the glee of those in the comments that they were all back. We're back now and we're this time we're finally going to destroy our hostage and we're going to destroy Zoe Gilday. And you could you could feel that they were salivating. However, the standard bearer, right, he's not interested. He hasn't got the heart for it. He doesn't want to do it. So how long will it be before they start turning on him? Well, they've been turning on each other in the comments already. And the funny thing is, some have got spanners and some haven't. And once they realise that the attacks on me are not getting through... Right, all they've got left to do is complain and then immediately start attacking each other. I think, to be honest with you, what I did before is I gave them more credit than they deserve. I thought that they were a little bit more intelligent, right, and had the ability to articulate and debate and things like that when in fact, actually, all the evidence is to the contrary. And that what, ha what it really is, is just a collection of people with low esteem, mental health issues, addiction issues, lack of any formal education, coming together, right, um, talking about issues, right, by just taking out snap bites, right, and not being able to form it and getting it wrong. That's the worst thing. The host said um, when Trump was in, he made a deal with Iran. No, he didn't. Well, when, when was that then? A fundamental thing like that. They can't get anything right. And they have such absurd opinions, right, you think you're reading it out of the sun. So anyway, I just thought I'd come back and do one, do a little one for you. I'll be back later on today as well, because it's a Friday morning thing. No doubt the news is going to get more extensive on all the um, Iranian attacks. Let's have a look. Shall we uh, write, let's have a look what we got here, Iran. Right, let's see what the news has got for us. Live updates, they're all on it now, all the mainstream. 
AP, they're all on it. US restricts travel for embassy staff in Israel. Iran says all flight restrictions have now been lifted. So does this mean it's all choreographed? They're saying there's been no damage to the nuclear facility in Isfahan, right? But the um, attack was really directed at the air base in Isfahan and at the factory which produced the drones that were used in the Israeli attack last weekend. But I think there's been more um, sabotage and espionage, right, that's gone on that will be revealed later today. Who ordered the, the attack? Did it come from the top? Well, the attack was ordered by the Israeli Prime Minister and Israeli Defence Minister in discussions with the War Cabinet, which call, which includes right people from all of the political parties. It's a government of national unity in many ways. Right, and then what they did is they told the Americans an attack was going to happen Right, and let them know, because in the, the previous attack on the 1st of April in Damascus, where they blew up the consulate and killed all the um, commanders and that, they only told the Americans after it happened. But you might see the Iranians trying to spin this and include the Americans. At the moment, the Iranians are playing all this down. Whereas normally you see um, footage of of um, people injured and buildings blown up and all this stuff, right? No, they want to play this down. So it's a sort of tit for tat and maybe this is going to be enough. Or will the Iranians say, no, we've got to do some more, right? Have the Israelis finished? Are there things going on now that are not being reported? We got the report of a missile strike on a building in Baghdad being used by Top commanders um, from Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, they were having a meeting, right? So, boom, it might turn out another sort of Damascus thing. Oh, who ordered the attack? What, from Iran? Well, it would have come down from the um, Supreme Leader. So it's seven o'clock now. Let's go and have a listen to the headlines. On the hour headlines. And don't forget, today's the last day, then we got a weekend, then next week we got to do what we got to do. I've got to address some health things and all of that stuff. Well, you just take them in your stride, didn't you? You know, thankfully, right, I've got my, um, I've got my trilogy, my, my thing, you know, the, the um, inhaler. I've got my um, Tylex, the Cocodamol. Near, uh, right, hang on, let me just turn this no, down then, right, let me go on.
sorry, just listening to the first bit that they said. Um, the media are playing a part in this with propaganda. They're being told to keep this um, under control, damp it down, try to keep saying that this, right, you know, last weekend after the, the Iranian attack on Israel, which completely failed, right, um, it was, let's hope the Israelis, um, you know, um, use restraint and, Biden said, don't, 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 and all that. Now the Israelis have responded. They're now going back over to the Iranians, going, don't, don't, don't. Let's hope they don't respond and all of this game. It's a tit for tat. And let's go and have a look, because we always get a good clue from the markets, because at the moment, right, the markets, right, they um, went down and rebounded. Um, oil went up 3% in one hit, and then it went, and, right, so let's see where we are now, as the day wakes up in Europe. Here you go, right, oil was right up three over 3%, three it's now up 2%, it's dropped now. Gold was up 2%, it's now down $1. To 2,396, it was up to 2,440. Let's have a look at the markets, right? The stock market. Let's have a look at the stock markets, right? Um, Asia Pacific. See, the stock market have closed, right? And they ain't going to open till Monday. The Nikkei was down 2%, and the others 1.5%. The topics in Tokyo and the Hang Seng. That's down 1.4%. Now, they can't open till Monday. So, that, so the way that looks, it's like they're undecided. We'll see what happens um, in Europe and that. Let's have a look at the futures market. Yeah, you see the futures market is showing down about 1%. I always look at the um, financial markets. I always look at the financial markets um, to give guidance because they normally get the news quite quickly. Quiet Man says Bitcoin is down 20%, but that's from a record high of $60,000, isn't it? So what is it now? 48000 That's 20% off. If we were using the old-fashioned fundamentals and the market was a genuine free market, with the events that have happened, right, there would have certainly been a 10% correction. People, they, people would have freaked out. Now, because the markets are controlled, when you get these huge world events, it doesn't move markets that much. And Quiet Man says the halving is today or tomorrow. So you think Bitcoin, well, Zoe gave us a great lesson on Bitcoin the other day. Zoe's got a method where when it drops 5 to 10%, she immediately buys. And then when it bounces back, she sells. And it gets her a few quid, not bundles, you know what I mean, a few quid to pay the rent and that for six months. So if you're telling me Bitcoin's gone down 20%, then Zoe would be um, um, buying. And Quiet Man, Zoe should talk to me. Well, listen, Quiet Man, next time you see Zoe in the comments, right, she's more than happy to give you her opinions on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. If you want to have a chat with her, she's brilliant. She knows a lot about that stuff. I know nothing about it. Quiet Man, I don't know. So next time she comes in, I'll mention it. But if it's going to halve, right, well, Zoe will be in there buying. And then when it starts to come back, she'll sell again. Oh, look out who we got again. Hello. Oh, well, thanks for that, Tom Joe. Right, well, I'll take that on board. Well, so I was talking. 
Sat in that hang on, so I was talking to Zoe for four and a half hours thinking it's Quinn Bar. You need to turn all the hostages who are afraid of Zoe. All oh, right, okay. Well, thanks a lot then, Tom. All the best. Here, listen, if you're if you own Bitcoin, sell it before it all goes half. Are you still live? Am I still live? Yeah. Oh, okay then. Right, thanks, Tom John. <laughs> this is crazy, isn't it? Isn't it funny? Hey, eh? it's mad, isn't it? Hey, eh? I mean, to be honest with you, because it's a hobby now, right? I mean, you know, tales of the unexpected. I don't mind. I honestly don't mind, right? I mean, that phone call, right? Was what was the phone call for? Oh, that's right. To tell me that Quinn Bar and Zoe Gilday are one of the same person. I told you, right, nothing would surprise me now, and sometimes I don't know what makes people think these things, because that thought has never gone through my head for one nanosecond. Honestly. I genuinely, I always tell you the truth. Anyway, what's the point of lying? One lie leads to the number two lie, and then you've got to tell number three lie to cover number two. But honestly, I never for one moment right, ever thought that Quinn Bar and Zoe Gilday are the same person. I've never heard of that. But that's two we've had today. First of all, the accusation is the person that left 132 comments on the live the other day was Zoe Gilday. Now we're being told that Quinbar is Zoe Gilday. Or Zoe Gilday's Quinbar. So I said to him, truthfully, like I would to anyone, well, so was I talking to Zoe then? Funny, isn't it, eh? Living in their head rent-free. And don't forget it's Friday prayers today, so we don't know what's going to happen then. Deluded or strung out, yeah, or bit of both, Shay. Bit of both, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, Tom Joe seems to be one of the more rational people, but then again, right, he's got the Tank Inc. channel, which is just purely clipping other channels. It's a clipping channel, okay. If he wants to clip this and start clipping me again, fair enough. But at least Tom Joe knows that it weren't me that started. It was them with that stupid episode last night, where they were meant to be reigniting the war between Plastic Paddy and all these groovy gang and all these supporters, right, and all the other people against Art Hostage and Zoe Gilday. And so I've got to write a response. Tom Joe phoned the other day and I said, listen, I don't talk about P Paddy in bad terms, and I don't. I, have, I certainly haven't. And as I say, people tell me things all the time, but I'm not going to repeat them and, and, and perpetuate that. All I will do is defend my position. And to be honest with you, what happened last night was embarrassing. If that's what, what an attack is meant to look like, well, honestly, I wouldn't have bothered. And the funniest thing was right, is that they all started attacking each other, which was going to always happen. And the thing is, some of them have got spanners and moderators, and some of them are not. I mean, I think they should all be moderators, so none of them can time each other out, and so they can attack each other to their heart's content. But you see, when you set the bar very, very low, it's easy to live up to it. That's why this channel 
as unique because there's no bells, no whistles. All that is, right, is the gravitas and the way that I can bring things to you. We got Zoe in the comments making the um, um, live flow. We have different subjects. There's headlines of the day subjects like today. We go through them and we chat about them and that's it. And we ring fence with the 14 days wait for subscribers before they can comment. But that's not enough, right? Because that has made the haters, right? Fume, steam coming out their ears. They're all losing it. They're all having a collective meltdown. Because that's what it was last night. It was a collective meltdown. And I'll tell you what, right? If you don't believe me, right? Here's the link to it. It's four hours long. You can skip through it. Okay, right? But honestly, right? It was a collective meltdown. There it is there. You can go and have a look at it. It was an absolute meltdown. The most absurd thing you've ever seen. It was embarrassing. And just as I said with government and other things in life, sometimes it's not all about doing something. It, sometimes it's about doing nothing. And if you can't do a job well, don't bother to do it. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And for a concerted attack, right, it was one of the most limp, lame, weak things, right? And that has been borne out by the host at the beginning, right, saying we're on a holy war now and all this, we're going to destroy them and all this game. And by the end of the live going on, oh, I don't really want to get involved in any more arguments and that. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to do an episode all about the Kinahans and in la da 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 and someone came in, I'll help you with research. So what happened to all the attack? It fizzled out, didn't it? Again. And that's when I made the comparison. Like the, the attack on Israel, 99% right of them um, was a 99% failure. In fact, I'd go further. It was a 100% failure. What laptop would you recommend? I've got no idea, no clue, no nothing. I've never owned them. Well, I did one about two decades ago. I bought one, 1,300 quid, and gave it to my son. Oh, that was about, what was that? It must be 20 years ago, Not even more now. It was when the Osbournes first came out. But, I mean, no, I'll use a desktop. You know, I'm very clunky and very antiquated. I've got a monitor, I've got a keyboard, and I've got a tower that are all old. And a mouse. And that's all I've got. I haven't even got one of them mobile phones you can connect to the internet and all that stuff. Or would you get a tablet? Again, I don't know the difference. The tablet's not a big mobile phone, isn't it? And then there's a laptop which you lift up and close down. I don't know. It depends how you want to use it, where you want to use it, and what you want to use it for. So I honestly don't know. It's no good asking me.
a man man charged with murder of gunman Tristan Sherry in restaurant on Christmas Eve. Sherry, 26, was attacked after carrying out a gun attack on Jason Hennessy Sr., 48, inside Brown Steakhouse in Blanchestown. A man has been charged with the murder of Tristan Sherry. Wayne Deegan, 26, initially were accused initially of attacking Mr. Sherry, violent disorder and producing a knife as, weapon, as a weapon, has been review, refused bail in January. He appeared again at Clover Court, Cloverhill District Court yesterday. The Director of Public Prosecutions directed Detective Gardy Sean Kelly to charge Mr. Deegan with murder. Judge John O'Leary heard that the accused was charged at the courthouse and in answer to that charge, he made no reply. He's been remanded in custody till next week. And there are other men that have been charged with it, right? This will be a big case when it comes up, right? But, I mean, they'd be firming it up, wouldn't they? The Stardust, more than 40 years ago, sorry, more than 40 years after the 1981 Stardust nightclub fire, the families of the 48 victims have finally been told how they died. Having heard, heard evidence and testimony from 373 witnesses over the 90 days of what has been the longest inquest in Ireland to date, a verdict of unlawful killing has been handed down by the foreman of the 12-person jury. It has been a long, difficult and sometimes seemingly impossible battle for the truth fought over decades-long struggle by the families. In 2001, when people got involved, they said it's a story of injustice, neglect and abject frustration. That was a shocking case, that was the Stardust thing. No one's ever been held to account for that. And as I say, we've got um, we've got this story which is going to start breaking, um, you know, throughout the day on the response by Israel, and then the potential response back response back from um, Iran. Or even more sinister, right? Um, the response, um, right? The um, response from Israel is not over. And I can say that the week has been a disastrous week for English clubs in Europe. And that is not an understatement, is it, eh? A disastrous week for English football clubs in Europe, which saw Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, West Ham all knocked out of European competitions. Tomorrow, Saturday, we've got Manchester City playing Chelsea at Wembley in the FA Cup semi-final. Will they or won't they? Will Man City round off the week by being knocked out of two competitions or will they redeem themselves and get a place in the final? 
Well, if form or the way they've been playing is a factor, Chelsea should win. And to be honest, the ironic thing might be that Cole Palmer scores the winning goal. That would be like rubbing salt in the wound for Man City because that's where he left. And then on Sunday, we've got the David and Goliath of Coventry City against Manchester United at Wembley in the semi-final of the FA Cup. And naturally, because Coventry are the underdogs, I'd like to see them win. I didn't care. I don't care who they were playing. It's not nothing. It's not anti-Manchester United or anything. Whoever they were playing, I'd go for the underdogs. Because for Coventry City, it will be like a cup final for them, even though it's a semi-final. Of course, they'd love to go back for the final and win the cup. But, I mean, to be honest, years ago, semi-finals used to be played at Hillsborough, Villa Park, Highbury. So it's watered down somewhat. And the fact is the prestige of the FA Cup has been watered down as well. And make no mistake, I genuinely believe, do you remember there was that, um, there was that proposal for the European Super League where certain clubs could never get relegated? That will happen. It might be five years or even ten. But that in, um, right, inevitably, because the money involved, will happen. Because the American system, right, is that very few teams get relegated and promoted, which almost guarantees an income every year. Dubai Super League, yeah, well, there could be a Middle Eastern League, yeah. I mean, what they would like to, um, what they would like to do would be to have a European Super League week in, week out. It will create more money. And you say that as well, um, Rare Cockney Governor. Bitcoin will collapse. All World Super League. Yeah, that makes me laugh in America. The baseball, they call it the World Series. Yet there's no teams from outside America. It's funny, isn't it? Eh? Is that arrogance? Is that what they call arrogance? Having a World Series, right, but only from one country. Right, that's arrogance, isn't it? And the fact that we're not seeing any pictures of any damage coming out of Iran makes me, you know, makes me think that that this is all being choreographed because normally you would see all this, wouldn't you? And they'd be outraged saying, right, we're going to get you back and all this stuff. And the thought of the day comes from Niccolo Machiavelli. Never attempt to win by force what can be won by deception.
So it will be interesting to see right how the rest of the day pans out. But I detect from the way the mainstream media are reporting this, they're trying to play it down, right? Which you can understand. They want to try to dial down the rhetoric. They want everyone to go back to their corners, right? And, and save face. Now, listen, I understand that. We all said that when in 2022, when we had five brutal murders of five innocent people in five months. We were screaming at the top of our lungs, go back to your corners, please stop this, put the firearms down. Well, on a much bigger scale, on a global scale, we're seeing the same thing happen. So anyway, right, um, hang on a sec, let me, oh dear, let me just stand up, I've got my cup of tea, I'm going to make some, myself some breakfast in a minute. I'm going to make myself some breakfast, I might have um, the usual, which is eggs and bacon sandwiches. Two rashers of bacon and a fried egg. Two rashers of bacon and a fried egg. What do you think of Fury Usyk fight? Think Usyk will win? I honestly don't know again. I hope that, that um, Tyson Fury um, knocks out Usyk. I hope he does. But who knows what could happen? It's not till, what is it, May the 18th? There's over a month to go. There's about a month to go, so anything could happen. It could get called off at the last moment. It could be resurrected to fight with um, Fury, um, Anthony Joshua. Fury says he's got 10 fights left in him. Well, if he gets beaten by Usyk, right, where does that put those fights? So if he ducks Usyk, he might be able to fight Anthony Joshua a couple of times. I honestly don't know. I've become, well, not become, I mean, I'm very cynical about a lot of this. I'm very cynical about all of this. even down to the freak accident where Tyson Fury got a cut on his eye and it was called off and all that stuff. I'm cynical about every aspect of it all because we see right throughout our daily lives that corruption, right, rules the roost. We see it and, and, and whereas years ago it was hidden, it's not actually hidden anymore. And so nothing is off the table.
So as I say, a lot of these, um, a lot of these things, there's so many things that we can speak about. I find there's so many subjects to talk about. And that literally anything to do with drama, beef and all that stuff, right, takes a back seat. And I laugh. I laugh about it because I just can absorb the blows, right? I've got everything out there at a very early stage. So all people can do now is make stuff up. And when people are making stuff up, it don't matter because it's not true. But we had to expect this. That, that some people that have been away from YouTube publicly are now starting to raise their head above the parapet and they're just the same as they were before. So I'll expect there will be more right um, attacks and more be reporting and all this sort of stuff and all that. But who cares? It don't matter to me. Because as previously happened, I won't have to do anything apart from sit back and watch those people attacking destroy themselves or fall out with each other. It even happened last night. Within about an hour, the snidey comments were coming in, having a chip at each other. And it wasn't banter, it was more. So much so that some of the moderators had to remove the comments. But what do you expect if you get a room with about a dozen people who are ho all horrible, nasty, troublemaking pests, cockroaches? What do you expect is going to happen? Do you really think you're going to be able to keep them all on the same page? Do you think you're right? And any previous disputes, right, are not going to raise their ugly heads? It was interesting to note because I was keeping an eye and I thought, oh, hello, someone's coming. Oh, look, that comment there, he's having a pop at him. Oh, look, she's having a go at her. And, and, and you know, and I thought, look, how could you even control this lot? They can't even get on with each other, let alone anyone else. Is that right? Bitcoin is down 20% since yesterday, right? Latest Bitcoin price. Let's see what that says. The Bitcoin price is 62,182.66, a change of 0.88% over the past 24 hours. So what's all this nonsense about it's crashed 20%? There's no crash. All oh, right, there it is. There, yeah, there was a crash. Sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. 3.30 a.m. It went down right to um, 59,000. Right, and literally in the last few minutes, it's gone up to 62,000, but it didn't go down 20%. But there was, right, there was, um, it collapsed. What time did it collapse? Where is it? Hang on, it's here. The lowest it got to, right, was 59,000. At 3.30, it's now at 62,000. So it's, it's, it's traced back all the losses already. That's on a live chart. Oh, over the last month. Oh, okay, last week, over the last month. Yeah, well, overnight, it did have a drop when the news was coming through. It's now 20 to 10 in um, Jerusalem. And everyone, you see, everyone's scrambling, right? Because they've done what they've done. Now the, the focus turns to the Iranians. 
you know, shush, 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 don't, um, you know, don't re um, respond, retaliate and all this or, re or respond and all this. Right? Whereas yesterday it was on the Israelis. Oh, don't, don't, don't. But don't you think it's also, right, the word don't. Um, President Biden last week said to the Israelis, don't, 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 right, respond. The Israelis have responded. He's now saying to the Iranians, don't, 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 don't. And no one's taking any notice of him. So it makes the office of the President of the United States weaker. I told you sometimes it's better to say nothing. So what has everyone got planned for the weekend then? I'm just going to try to relax. I've got some work to do and I don't want to do it. Right? It's, you know when you've got something to do, I've got to collate some stuff and all that carry on. It's it's not a bad thing, right? It's um, In fact, actually, it's a good thing. The problem is, right, is I've got no um, energy or no wherewithal to do it. I've got to sit down and I've got to start writing it and, and get it all, and it's meant to be handed in by Monday morning, early. So now I'll keep delaying it. I was saying I'll have Thursday off and I'll do it Friday. It's now Friday and I've got no energy. I've been up all night anyway. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll make sure that I'll definitely do it tomorrow or at the latest Sunday. Oh, sorry, um, quiet man. I was quoting you in dollars, not in pounds. I was quoting you in dollars. It went from sixty-two thousand dollars to fifty-nine thousand dollars, and then back up to sixty or something. Uh, Tony Kelly, when it comes to the Kinahans, right, I, I, I rule nothing in and rule nothing out. I certainly know that Christy Kinahan Senior for years would have been preparing for this kind of events. What kind of stuff they've got, I don't know. But what we do know publicly is that the Kinahans have got the finest legal representation in the UAE. Experts on UAE law. So we can't assume, right, that even if the intention was to arrest the Kinahans and extradite them, that that will be very easy. There are many, many um, layers to this, and the Kinahans no doubt will have aces up their sleeve have they converted to islam have they taken second wives have they had children with those second wives who were uae citizens so they could prevent themselves getting extradited in the same way ronnie biggs did in brazil all those years ago when Jack Slipper of Scotland Yard flew to Brazil, all the paperwork was done. They got him on the plane and then it came through that he, he, he was the father of a Brazilian little boy. And so they had to take him off the plane, right? And he then remained free for decades more until he actually flew home when he was elderly and needed health care. And then was initially put into Belmarsh and then released to a hospice where he died.
and the assumption that the Kinahans would flee the UAE, I've always been of the assumption that the UAE is probably the safest place for the Kinahans. I've always thought that. And that's why I, I, you know, I firmly believe they haven't moved one inch. That the influence they have, the the relationships they've developed over the last, what shall we say, nine years in Dubai, the income they generate coming in through various different kinds of things and all of that the serious relationships they develop with people in the UAE, Dubai in particular, means, to be honest with you, think about where else they would feel secure. I can't think of anywhere else. But um, to be honest, don't be surprised to see some kind of big headline, okay, which will be taken as a token gesture. I think the first thing that the Kinahans have spit out will be Sean McGovern. There already is a war international arrest warrant out for him. However, I don't think, I'm not sure, but I don't think it'll be like even that will be easy that Sean McGovern might be taken into custody and then bailed it right um, pending an extradition hearing. Electronically monitored or something like that. I honestly don't know. But if there was genuine will to do this, they, this would have happened a long time ago. And you make a fair point, Tony Kelly, that wh whatever our opinions of the Kinahans are, they're certainly very sophisticated in many ways. Their tentacles have got into very dark places and they certainly will have contingency plans. They may very well have blackmail material. And then you can say, well, why can't they just take them out then? Well, there might be them things called dead man switches. That if anything happens to them, that, that all of this stuff will be released on the internet. Videos, photographs and everything which would rock the Middle East with scandal. Because ironically, in the Middle East, right, um, war, death and destruction is accepted. But scandal, losing face, is everything. So to be honest with you, um, I think that there, I think everything's on the table. I genuinely do. I also believe that the, um, but Christy Kinahan, with some kind of patriotism, whether that's British or Irish, right, um, as would have traded intelligence on the Hawala system, right, for a license to operate. I think you add that, I think, to the fact that there could be blackmail material, relationships, even behind the scenes, the way that Daniel Kinahan was very, um, managed to navigate through the labyrinth of boxing. Who's not to say that Prince Turkey in Saudi Arabia is not being advised by Daniel Kinahan? And I know that sounds crazy, but who's to say that's not happening? Who's to say messages are not being exchanged between Daniel Kinahan and Prince Turkey with regards boxing and the operation and how it works? And who could be the messenger from Daniel Kinahan to Prince Turkey? None other than perhaps Tyson Fury. Who it seems publicly that Prince Turkey has taken a great liking to.
So as I say, I genuinely think, yes, I think that when the actual story of the Kinahans is written, there'll be many things in there which seem outrageous at the moment, right, but will turn into fact. And if, you know, it would beg a belief that the Kinahans on the way up, especially when they landed in Dubai, wouldn't be working towards having stuff aces up their sleeve for the eventual time when when they could be facing legal things. But make no mistake that if the Kinahans were taken down and taken out of the equation and in custody, the actual trade would not miss a heartbeat. The fact that everyone's looking at one cartel, albeit a very big cartel, doesn't mean there are not hundreds of other cartels out there operating every day. And now we got to the stage where there is a need for a regular supply. So even if you wanted to shut off that kind of criminality, right, it wouldn't be in your best interest because can you imagine 10,000 addicts in a city and there's a drought? I honestly believe governments have, um, do think about things like this. I believe there are secret reports that work out that if there was a drought on the brown or the white or whatever it is, what would happen? How long before we would get incidents happening with people clucking, people going cold turkey? You know, they're the, they're the questions I think that need to be asked. And I believe that the conclusions would be that the government always has to have a secret stash. A secret stash that if there was a genuine drought to, to alleviate or prevent that spiraling out of control, the government would release certain amount of stuff through certain organised crime groups to keep order. And I know that sounds crazy that the government would release illegal substances to keep order, but that could very well be one of the scenarios that has been considered. And that on some kind of military base somewhere, there is a hangar, and in there are pallets of this stuff that's been seized. And every three months, they might destroy it all and put a new lot in there. And what they, they say, what's that for? That's in case there was ever a, a drought, we would have to ship it to the cities to stop um, law and order breaking down. Because the usage is so prevalent, there was, you know, years ago, you would have a few thousand addicts. Nowadays, I would say there might be hundreds of thousands, if not half a million or a million, so that you have to get a regular supply to those people. And there is something to be said for the fact that in the 1980s, when Thatcher, neoliberalism, was going to do away with all the manufacturing jobs in all the manufacturing centres in the UK, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Liverpool, Newcastle, and so on, that they introduced the brown on a large scale to pacify the people that wouldn't have any jobs, get them all addicted. 
And if they're all addicted, they'll all be like zombies and they won't be out of protest and all that. But, that, um, you know, that might have been one of the things because it seems strange that the um, epidemic of brown and that came in the 80s at the same time as all the manufacturing and blue-collar jobs were disappearing. Well, I wouldn't say it's the only reason, Arkan, but you're correct in saying that the Taliban, right, reduced the amount of brown per, brown and opium from 4,000 tonnes a year, right, down to nearly zero, right, and then 9-11 happened and they went into Afghanistan. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? Right, it's like now... <laughs> It's like now, right, that Israel has now attacked Iran, so now Iran goes and attacks Tunisia. And you say, well, what, you attacked Tunisia? Well, Israel attacked us. You go, well, why are you attacking? Right, the attackers on 9-11, Osama bin Laden is Saudi Arabian. 16 of the alleged hijackers came from Saudi Arabia. So after 9-11, what does America do? It invades Afghanistan because they said he was there on holiday. I mean, it's, you don't mean to get rid of the Taliban. When the natural assumption would have been after 9-11, invade Saudi Arabia. Exactly. No, I agree with you, Arcane. Yes, American soldiers, um, allied soldiers guarding the poppy fields and all that stuff. Yes. Opium has been a huge money earner for the top, top, top people, including royal families, right, for hundreds of years. The Boxer Revolution in China was down to opium, where they shipped the opium from India, the Raj, right, and got all the Chinese people addicted to it. And then the Chinese went, we ain't having none of that. And the British went, oh, really? They sent the British army in, right, and... Blew the hell out of the place. The Boxer Revolution. That's what it was all about. That the Chinese went, listen, you're, you're making all the people in our country addicted to this opium from India. And the British went, well, yeah, so what? They went, right, well, we're going to rise up against you. They went, oh, right, against the cream of the British Navy. And then that's when the Boxer Revolution happened. Right, and the British soldiers, right, conquered China and they raided the Summer Palace and stole all the porcelain and everything that we now see come up for sale. Some of it was the Fitzwilliam Jade. Oh, yes, it was held at the Fitzwilliam Museum, but it was stolen from the Chinese in the 19th century. And the, especially the European royal families, right, had a percentage in the opium trade. And some people have even speculated that they still have an interest in the opium trade. And that some of the money is diverted here, there and everywhere and goes in the back pockets of some European royal families. And very powerful families, the Sassoons. They were very powerful, powerful, weren't they? The Sassoon family. Right, and they got their money out of opium. So you can go down the rabbit hole on that. Of course you can. Do I condemn the Kinnahans for all the murders, the violence and everything? Of course I do. I will condemn them for that. Do I condemn them for, for bringing a business corporation model to the illicit trade in those substances? Well, no, I don't, because to be honest, if it weren't them, it would be someone else. 
And, and once they are removed from the equation, there be other people who will step in, already stepped in. I'm still convinced the Kinnahans were out of the game by 2019. They were more of a, a consultancy. They were more of the middle people sorting the money out. And they were allowing all the other cartels just operated as they do. And that they were sort of just not higher up, but they were just as if they were detached. They are all at it. I remember, right, leading up to Jerry the Monk Hutch's trial, everyone was saying, oh, the Hutch's, right through the feud. Oh, yes, the Hutch's, no, they don't get involved in that stuff. They don't deal in the substances like that. Oh, no, he's an old-fashioned um, armed robber, is Jerry Hutch. Really? Oh, OK. The truth of the matter is they're all in it up to their necks. There's too much money in it. Is Jerry the uh, Monk Hutch involved in the, the narcotics? Of course he is. Always has been, always will be. They all have been involved in it. There's no, none of them are sort of, all this kind of romantic notion of the general, Martin the General Carhill. I tell you this, and I think I'm on firm ground. If Martin Carhill, the general, hadn't been assassinated in 1994 and was alive today, he would be a top dealer, importer like John Gilligan or, um, um, What's his name? The Colonel, John Cunningham. George Penguin, George Mitchell, the Penguin, George the Penguin Mitchell. OK, right, so that's what Martin Carr, all this nonsense, oh yeah, at the time he was objecting to all that stuff, the substances and that, but it became such a widespread thing, he would have been swept up in the tsunami. And he would have, it was a juggernaut, and he would have either had to have got on board or got out of the way. And I believe Martin Carhill, the general, would have been up to his neck in that business. Of course he would. And anyone who says anything different is being naive. Yes, at the end of the 19th century, you could go to Harrods and chemists and you could get, a, um, um, right, you could get um, a little package, right, of brown and it would say brown helps with the complexion and with your constitution and all of that stuff. It was legal. You could buy it over the counter. You could buy the syringes. You could buy whatever. It was all legal. And we all know the stories on Coca-Cola and all that. What well, the ingredients up to about, I'm not sure how when it was, but up to a certain point, there was the real thing. Okay, and that was the slogan, Coca-Cola, the real thing. And the global laundry mat, right, the laundry, right, global money, Right, um, from that all the criminality around the world, right, the global money, right, was being laundered in Ukraine. That was where it was going through. The Russian sanctions came, and so Serbia and the Balkans started to started to play a much more prominent role. It shows how twisted the system is that one of the top bosses, right, of the Dino cartel in Bosnia, right, in the Balkans, right, um, Edin Gakkenin, right, he pleads guilty to charges in the Netherlands via video link from Bosnia and receives eight years in jail and can serve those in Bosnia. I'm sure, right, that Daniel Kinahan would love to do a video link with Ireland and be sentenced to eight years in jail and he's allowed to serve it in Dubai.
Why was Ed Ingakenin allowed to get away? Do they need at least one of the super cartel leaders to be out? However, next year, 2025, guess who's coming to dinner? Guess who's being released next year? El Rico. The Chilean. He's currently serving, I think it's 11 years in the Netherlands. Gets released next year. Rafael Imperiali, what is he going to get sentenced to? He's grassing up a lot of the people locally on the Camorra and everything, right? But part of his plea deal has got to be a certain sentence, isn't it? He's given back an island worth 70 million US dollars, an island in the Gulf that can be developed for housing and that, worth 70 million. He gave that back as part of the package. There's much more to pl much more at play here than what we understand. This and um, right, and the Kinnahan cartel's rise wasn't only conventional crime. It's blatantly obvious, right, that Fassi, who who started the Hawala money changing system, was lured to Dublin to a safe house of the. Kinnahan's and was grassed up without a shadow of a doubt of a doubt by Daniel Kinnahan and Johnny Morrissey. He was then extradited to the Netherlands and is currently in jail serving 12 years, 18 years, whatever it is. The minute he gets arrested in Dublin, Daniel Kinnahan and Johnny Morrissey step in and take over the Hawala system. Not only for the benefit of their, their dealing and that, right, but you could be 100% assured, right, but with also the ability to monitor who's doing what with money with regards Western intelligence agencies wanting to know whether Iran's doing this and Iran's doing that and another company, Hezbollah's doing this. I mean, to be honest, I'd love the lot. I'd love it all to come out, right? That that literally everyone's got blood on their hands. Everyone's hands is dirty, from the Kinnahans to the royal families to the governments, to the diplomats to the intelligence agencies. Get it all out there. Sunshine is the best disinfectant. We saw that the way that it operated in the film Scarface when they when he was gonna um, um, when he went down to meet the fella in Bolivia and there was the CIA representative there and all of that stuff. So you don't think that the same thing doesn't happen in the Middle East decades later with interest and ironically, ironically, the British with regards to MI6. Right, has got a lot more political capital in the Middle East than the Americans. And I know it sounds strange, but the British, because it goes back so far. The King of Jordan and the King of Jordan's father were both trained at Sandhurst. The current president of the UAE was trained at Sandhurst. The influence of MI6 in the Middle East, right, is... Um, is based upon decades and decades and decades of political capital. And what we were told at one time, all the Kinnahans have invested in cryptocurrency. They must have lost the fortune. Well, first of all, I think they only ever used it for payments, and so the payment went in and it went out. However, even if they've held a lot of crypto, right, they must be worth an absolute fortune now. 
That's probably why they now value the Kinahans at 1.5 billion US dollars. They've gone up $500 million in two years. And that's only the estimations of the authorities and the mainstream media. Morning, Doyle. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Nice to see you. And the other thing that they don't want to talk about, right, is the fact that two or three F-35 stealth bombers, right, could have, um, right, entered Iranian airspace, right, dropped their bombs and that, and then left. And if that's the case that comes out, that would humiliate the Iranians further. Some people are saying the Israelis fired their missiles from Iraqi airspace. They flew through Jordan and through Syria. And also that if um, other Middle Eastern countries have cooperated with the, um, with the Israelis and, and by proxy the Americans, they will face a blowback from Iran and Iran's proxies. I mean, to be honest, I would say Jordan is a very dangerous place to be at the moment. An Iranian official says no plan for immediate retaliation. Yet only a few days ago, the Iranian um, foreign minister said, if Israel attacks Iran, we will attack within seconds. So you see the way this rhetoric right is changing by the hour. There's a concerted effort, and I can understand that they want to keep this Right, um, keep a lid on this as, as much as they can. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Gilday has entered the building. Zoe Gilday's entered the building. Zoe, I've kept going because I wanted to speak to you. We've got so much to talk about. And I noticed your comment that came in last night. I managed to read it quickly and it was quickly dispatched. But it was tip of the spear. When you said, how sad you idiots here, right? All you've got to, if you didn't have art hostage to talk about, you'd have nothing else to talk about. So there's been two attacks overnight. One by the Israelis responding to the Iranians and one by a previous channel, I won't keep saying his name, right, and his followers who gathered over on that channel, right, of old, all the old faces gathered there, ready to launch the attack on Zoe Gilday and Art Hostage. It lasted about 10 minutes. It was the weakest, most benign, absurd and humiliating attack I have ever faced. I'm almost embarrassed for them. I'm almost embarrassed for them. And Zoe comes in with, morning all, do not fear, that's good. Honestly, makes my day, makes me feel a lot better when Zoe says, do not fear. I am, I, you know, it makes me shrug my shoulders or drop them and go, oh, Zoe's here. It is not the end yet. Yes, no, it's not. Obsessed they are. Oh, no, they are, aren't they? They're mad, didn't they? Absolutely mental, weren't they? Loco. They're going loco down in Acapulco. 
I've got so many of these notifications coming in, they're doing my nut. Right, so what Zoe got to say? It's not the end yet, no. This is not the end. This is not even the beginning of the end. What this is, perhaps, is the end of the beginning. And yes, Zoe, yes. Did you notice the direct attacks that you faced? Direct attacks from the host on Zoe. Real direct attacks, right? But not attacks that would get through or would mean anything, but they were said with such viciousness and vile nastiness against Zoe, honestly. And they started out that this was going to be a crusade, that they would finally destroy Zoe Gilday and finally destroy our hostage. 15 minutes later, they run out of breath. They spoke again, right? They then went back to it. And by the end of the show, the host was saying, I don't really want to get involved in all this fighting no more. I don't want to do that anymore. So it was like a damp squib. Honestly, I swear to God, right? I'm embarrassed for them. I swear to God, Zoe, you are right. I'm not holding back, right? Honestly, right, Zoe said, Kenzie, right, is seriously mentally ill. I agree. I don't know whether it's even funny anymore. The constant talking about herself. She spe speaks fluent Latin. She was on the Vatican radio, right? And she was in the army in the signals. I'm telling you, she hit the hat trick, right? She got the full card. Right, it was the fire. <laughs> Honestly, right, that was it. She left nothing out last night because what she does, any subject, she has to be the expert. Chess, someone said here, chess is a good game. Oh, I played for England under 13s at chess. <laughs> honestly, it was embarrassing. Zoe, honestly, two minds think alike. When I was listening to this, I thought, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Right, right, she's right. She think right. She's telling everyone she speaks fluent Latin. Right, that when she was a kid, she sung. No, listen, it weren't. She was on the Vatican radio, Zoe. She said, "I sung Ave Maria on Vatican radio when I was a kid." And then, right, because he came in. Right, honestly, he came in. Tattoo. <laughs> right from fantasy island right and she said i'm um, talking about the army and she went yeah i was in the signals he, he went oh sure what in bradford he said do you go he, he, he said do you go to the reunions in kenzie honestly i've never heard nothing so funny in all my life i was roaring with laughter i couldn't believe it morning Quim quimba how are you doing thank you for that conversation the other night i enjoyed that and by the way, right, Tom, Joe in Dublin and all of them over there, right, are convinced that Quimbar is Zoe and Zoe is Quimbar. I'm telling you, because I said to him, what you mean that I was talking for four and a half hours to Zoe Gilday because Zoe Gilday is Quimbar? I went, thanks for that. I said, it's the first I knew. I've never, honestly, I thought it was the funniest thing last night. I was sitting here roaring with laughter. Roaring with laughter, they all came in playing their victims. They were all licking their wounds and they were trying to put a brave face on it. And then all of a sudden the host, right, he said that he's now dismantling the studio. Do you remember the studio that he was building last October and it was gonna he was gonna be Joe Rogan, wasn't he? Right, 20, 2024, we'll have the studio soundproofing and the fancy microphone. Right, and all of this, a laptop and all that, and I'm going to do it all professional. Well, that's all got to go now. And he said he can do the audio from anywhere. <laughs> Honestly, on the hell the mighty have fallen. It was funny. It was so funny to watch. 
And I think what happened, he went in there gung-ho, and by the end of it, he thought, no, do I want to go through this again? Because they know, you know what's going to happen. They will lose. I'm not saying that, that Zoe, Gilday, and I will win, right? But you can guarantee that they will lose, right? Because if for no other reason that they will turn on each other, because we ain't even come on to that yet. After the initial attack, right, and then it goes quiet, then one of them comes in and has a pop at another one because they don't like each other. And in the end, right, they were all attacking each other in the comments. And I thought, well, this seems to be a um, unified bunch, right? I, I nicknamed them Losers United. Losers United. They've had channels on YouTube for donkey's years, right? And they've been complete and utter failures from the beginning. Right, I've come on YouTube with no expectations, right? So it's only the only ways up. There's no bells, whistles. And another thing, all that promising. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, I want to do a good episode on the Kinnahans. Tell the whole story, professional. And then someone came in, I'll help you with the research. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm up for that. And then he said, I'm going to talk about UFOs. And someone else came in and went, I'll get all you all the research for that. That's lovely. Yeah, I'm up for that. This time next year, we'll be millionaires, right? None of this will develop. None of this will come to fruition, right? They're talking the same bollocks, right, that they've been talking, right, for the last six years. Right, let's have a look here, right? Let's have a look. So what's <laughs> right? Um, yeah, no, Zoe, I agree. Zoe says it would be hilarious if it weren't not if it were not so cringe. It was. It was cringe worthy. Yeah, last night showed us exactly why we don't want them here. Yeah, the chess thing. You remember that one, Zoe? Honestly, you can't believe it. And you know, I think that started someone, right, Olive. Olive said, I've met Conor McGregor, and he was very polite and very gentlemanly to me, right? And I would, I would have come back and said to her, well, what course he would be, right? Do you think he'd be interested in you, right? He got a face like, like a slapped arse, right? Honestly. Right, beauty is only skin deep. Ugliness goes all the way through. Of course he'd be polite with you. Honestly, he wouldn't even let you clean his shoes, let alone his exhaust pipe. <laughs> oh, dear. Honestly. Do you know what I mean? Olive, yeah, you can imagine when she met Conor McGregor, she ran to the toilet, right? And they go, what you done there? Is, where's Conor? Is he coming in? Right, he said, meet me in the toilet, <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? Well, he left about half an hour ago. Oh, he said he was coming in the toilet with me. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, some mothers do have them, don't they? A face that only a mother could love. Yeah, what was that film in Ireland? What was that film in Ireland, right, where they had that fella, right, and he had a winning lottery ticket, right, but he passed away. So they tried to take him to the post office, right, to claim the lottery. Do you remember that, right, holding him up, right, dead as a door? What, well, Weekend at Bernie's, right? Apparently there's a new episode of Weekend at Bernie's, right, um, on Merseyside. Honestly, some people make more comebacks than Frank Sinatra. Right? Honestly, sometimes, you know what I mean? Because they want to, they say, well, look, if he's going to pop these clogs, can you make sure it's on a Thursday? Because uh, uh, the pension day is Wednesday, and we want to make sure we get the last pension payment. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Oh, it makes me laugh. It really does. Oh, don't. What you got to say? I've got to read this first because Zoe's coming out with some pearls of wisdom this morning. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, honestly, yeah, that, that that's another thing, right? It's like someone if it's like if there's someone right in your group of friends, right, who's got a nervous tick, right, and they keep shaking their head, right? Everyone ignores it, don't they? Right? Or, or if someone's got a terrible wig, right, a terrible hairpiece, right? Everyone ignores it, right? And don't, you know, it's like don't crack, you know what I mean? Whatever you do, don't say a word. Right. And it's the same with her. They know that she's talking a load of nonsense, right? But they ignore it because she never gets any response when when she says that. Even the rest of them don't believe her, but they pretend to because they want to feel like they're all together against our hostage. Exactly. They're the motley crew, the dirty dozen, right? They really are, honestly. The usual suspects, the groovy gang. All the effort, all the time, and what for? They are literal idiots. No, they really are. And do you know what, Zoe, last night showed me as well? Because I was listening intensely, right? They keep getting things wrong, factually wrong. The host said, yeah, under Trump, we never had trouble with Iran because he made a deal with Iran. And it's like, well, no, he didn't. The only deal that he made was with, with North Korea when he went to see um, the leader of North Korea on the border. Nothing to do with Iran. They can't even get their facts right. And it just made me realise that they talk a load of nonsense over there. What they are is low IQ, low intellect people who can't write them. Um, who can't really barely string a sentence together. And so then they want to give their opinions on geopolitical things they know nothing about. And it's not that they can't go and research and can't go and find out about these things. <laughs> Honestly. No, it was. Zoe says it was hilarious, though. They lose every time. I know, Zoe, and we don't have to do anything. That's the funny thing. Right? You went in with one comment and it made all their heads explode. I think you might have got blocked by about eight people at the same time. You know, it's just, it's absurd. Right, and now they'll be sitting there, steam, right, fuming, fuming, right, and because the beauty of it all for us, Zoe Gilday, Art Hostage, and all the people here, right, is that we don't have to do anything because they're self destruct. Because once now, right, the channel's ring fenced, now they've got to wait 14 days and they get one comment and they're gone, right, they're going to turn on each other, they always do. Right, let's have a look. Anyway, Cherry and Cromwell hate each other. I know Mark is there pretending to be friends with Cherry. I know they're all pretending to get along. It was funny. It was funny. And then Darren put his camera on, right? And he looked like Hagrid out of the, um, what, what's them things? What, what is it called? Harry Potter. And as he said, right, he, he, he doesn't take stuff because he has to give a urine uh, sample on a Monday at the, at the treatment centre. He gives a urine sample at the college on the Wednesday and has to give another urine sample at the treatment centre on the Thursday. And so he says he takes no illegal substances, and I believe him. He only takes prescribed medication, substitute medication. Oh, yeah, and, he, and what did he say? Yeah, him, yeah, them two, when they come on, right, they kept the channel alive. And he even had the gall, he even had the balls, right, Zoe, to say, um, uh, uh, he said, Art, oh, you need to go back to talking about crime. He said, you need to go back talking about the cartels and that. He said, you're losing 10 subscribers every day. That's not true. 
He said, your, um, he said your, your channel is dying. You need to go back to the cartels and talking about crime. Yet yeah, when I was talking about those things, the same people were saying, stay away from crime. <laughs> right? Honestly, it reminds me of how, of, of how far we have come. Remember when we used to have that same type of chat here exactly that's what i'm just having a bit of fun now i mean because i'm so prolific that's one of the things honestly so there's two things right which right which absolutely destroy them the main thing is that i am live every day i'm live every day prolific sometimes twice three times right so every time i go live it's a magnet and they have to listen and right, and it turns their stomach every single time they hear me live. And Zoe says, Ah, oh, hostage, elders being an expert in everything lead to selling green from a council house in Liverpool is your greatest achievement. Yeah, no, I don't, honestly. It's embarrassing, isn't it? And then we had an appearance from Cy. He came on the live and he said, Steve, he said, I've got nothing against you. And then Steve said, no, I've got nothing against you, Cy. He went, all right, we're all all right now because they have fallen out. I don't know what it was about, nothing to do with me. So they made up. So that is their only plus that they got from that. So he's back on the phone. The plan was, was to gather all the, all of them together have three of them on the panel and then they could have a united front and attack Zoe Gilday and our hostage, right? And it went wrong. It all went wrong. It just, it, it right, it collapsed in on itself. It was a house of cards. What's that, Zoe? There was a moment where I just kept seeing comments about me. And after one in particular, I unloaded on what I was observing in just just the last few minutes on the channel. Cromwell went into shock. He did, didn't he? Honestly, right? I mean, he's not the full ticket. And I mean, this is not me having a go at him, right? I mean, honestly, go to Stephen Ronan's channel and see when he had the meltdown. Well, no, that's it, Zoe. They couldn't get the facts right. And when they were giving their opinions, they were so convoluted. They were so mixed up and muddled up. You couldn't make head nor tail of them. Yes, exactly. And do you remember him, right? Yes, Tattoo from Fantasy Island, Monsieur. Right, do you remember when he came in, right, and was trying to boast, right, about being friends with Darren Waterhouse, the murderer, and that how he was going to go and visit him and how he was spent 18 months with him, right, and rather than him get a decent response, everyone slaughtered him for it. And to ingratiate himself with the Irish people, he was trying to give a kind of Republican flavour, and then said that he loves the SAS, right, which then meant all the Irish lads, right, piled on him. That's right, yeah, exactly, wanting to collaborate, but that, no, but listen, Zoe, that's when it gets to the fantasy, the fantasy kind of um, the positive, this time next year we'll have a million subscribers, we collaborate, every channel you go on, people go on the panel and say, yeah, we've got to collaborate and we'll do this, right, and you know what happens, I'll tell you, nothing, <laughs> that's fine, listen, I promise you nothing, 
Okay, so anything that happens is a bonus. Right, I promise you nothing. Right, so anything that happens is going to be a bonus. I'm not going to boast that I'm going to have President Trump and Joe Rogan on a panel with me. Don't be so stupid. Oh, I'm going to do this and do that. Right, honestly, right, you know, we had the videos when he was um, preparing the studio, painting the wall black, and then he put all the sound boards and that on. Right, might it might be an idea, right, if he films himself, right, dismantling the uh, studio. He'd get some clicks and views, wouldn't they? Right, it'd be quite funny, wouldn't it, really? Yeah, that's right. He made, Darren made the comment about Steve calling him on the phone and saying, shall we really go after to destroy this art now? I think, what's the matter with these people? You're right, yet yeah, Darren was plucking nonsense off the nonsense tree. Yeah, nonsense, complete nonsense. But then again, let's be fair, right, the prescribed medication we're talking about, methadone and all that stuff, right? I mean, that makes people feel a bit like that, doesn't it? Here you are. There you go. Right, quiet man. Zoe's in here now. If you be polite, okay, you can speak to Zoe about the crypto stuff and she'll answer your questions and you can offer stuff as well. So carry on. Fill your boots. Yes, and the problem as well, yeah, I know he could have done things different. When he lost his big channel and started the new one, he could have, and with all the new studio, he could have gone down and being professional, but apparently he's been suffering with his own domestic problems and his own addiction problems. His addiction problems have been getting worse recently. He's also got certain duties he's got to do, so he's snowed under with everything from every angle. And it's funny, though, in the Israel-Iran thing, the other day is de-escalation. Israel must de-escalate now. The headline, the banner headline now, going along the ticker at the bottom, the ticker tape, that is they call it, is saying Iran must de-escalate now. We're calling for de-escalation, all the world leaders. And it's funny, though, isn't it, eh? There you go. See, she's off now, Zoe. Look, I have one Bitcoin that I trade over and back, but it took me ages to have a full Bitcoin. And then Quiet Man says, I bought in the 30s. You don't mean the 1930s, dear. No, I'm only joking. You mean 30,000. Right, so Zoe says you're up about 100% on investment. Right, okay. Now let's see. Look, these are other. These are these are um things, right? That are, that have got. Are not that I haven't got any interest in, but you know, I, I um I encourage that people who who can talk about the crypto stuff and Fibonacci. I thought Fibonacci was a moving chess. I thought the Fibonacci was like when you open with chess. I think it's moving the pawn two squares forward. That's called the Fibonacci open. And then you put the horse at the front and then the um, bishop over on the left-hand side or right-hand side. That's called the Fibonacci Open. Is that correct, Zoe, in chess? 
I can play chess. I'm no good. But I know which bits move where and all that. And I try to think ahead and if I do this and that. But I'm not brilliant or it's by any stretch. But I can play. It's like backgammon. I know how to play it, but I'm not that good. Yes, Zoe, I, no, I understand that. Zoe says, at this stage, I feel cruel when re responding to these people. They have allowed themselves to be pushed to absolute insanity, and all of them have held on to it for a long time. I know, you don't have to do anything. They do it to themselves. They come here to feel a sense of unity against a common enemy. I know, and since we ring-fenced it, right, they don't know what to do. But it is also fake. Remember the Cherry and Mark stuff. How many months was that going on for? Now Mark tolerates Cherry and wants to be friends. I oh, know. It show well no, to me it shows the absurdness of all of this. And as I say, I know things, right? But I'm not going to try to throw hand grenades out there. He's done this here. Did you know he did that? And did you know she did that? I'm not going to play that game. And I'm sure Zoe knows stuff, right? And Zoe's not going to throw them out. What for? That'll be just, right, getting down and dirty on their level. We don't need to do that. And what really kills them even more, what really depresses them even more is, right, is the fact, right, that I don't care about these channels and all that stuff because, as I say, it's a hobby now. And, yes, there's 8,100 subscribers. It's been that figure for a couple of months as it goes up about five, comes down ten, goes up three, four. Right, so all that I'm losing ten subscribers a day is a load of nonsense. But if it goes, we just open another one, right? You, I've tested it in the last two weeks. I can get 50 subscribers, snap my fingers, right? Which means you can go live. So that's it. So they know you can't win. This, you know, let's set aside, right, let's get the first thing clear. I win, I always do in the end, right? Now put that to one side, okay? You cannot win. Because the way that you attack is amateurish and you end up turning on yourselves because the group of people you put together are a motley crew with addiction problems, mental health problems and all that who don't get on with each other, let alone anyone else. But that's what they are. They're a motley crew. And many of them, right, if they were true to themselves, actually love this channel. Right? They love this channel, right? But they right, they don't want to admit it. And now they burn their bridges. They cannot be part of this channel. And this channel is ring-fenced right in the middle of enemy territory. The Motley crew and their determination to put on a few, put on a fake show of strength that they think is going to some well, some way, some to is going to somehow overwhelm us psychologically in terms of their numbers and comments it is, is exactly why their lives are failures. It's true. It's, I mean, it's ridiculous. We, we're only responding. Now, Now, Zoe, if this was the other way round, right, if this was Olive, right, or um, or whatever, they would have called this live up, wouldn't they, like she does with the other geezer. They play, right, 20 seconds or a minute and then, and then critique it. 
right? I don't do that. I could go and grab his live now and play you the audio and then all that fair use and I can't be doing with it all. And it'll be interesting to see how long that live stays up because, to be honest with you, it's right. I mean, the longer the better for me because it's just like a humiliation. It's an embarrassment. It's an absolute embarrassment. It's almost like a lesson in self-flagellation. You know, like them Iranians do when they hit themselves on the back with that leather thing, makes all their back bleed. Do you remember them? They go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh and they keep hitting themselves. That was the kind of thing. It was a kind of masochistic fest. Honestly, right, but the but the worst thing was the most tragic thing is is that they didn't realise that's what it was. They thought that it was a kumbaya, it was a reunion, right, of the anti Zoe Kilday and anti Art Hostage Appreciation Society, right, and it turned into a complete and utter disaster. Because even by the end of it, the host himself was saying, "I don't really want to get involved in this fighting anymore." Yeah, exactly. That's what it was. It was um, Olive was just, is just desperate for Paddy to work with her. He first ignored her, then they all did. And at the end of the live, they said they would pack everything in. At the end of the live, they said, that's it, no more fighting. It was the most embarrassing thing I think I've ever seen. When people need to surround themselves with other low IQ morons because they think it somehow gives them some strength, shows there's a chasm in intellect that can never be bridged to get to, on to our level, of course. Because you do ask yourself, because when you find a lot of idiots like that, there's one of them who's half sensible and you think, what are you doing here? Right, when it means, right, that they can rule the roost because all the others are, like, Google-eyed to them. Oh, look, he said something interesting. Oh, look, he said something I don't understand, but I'm going to nod and say, oh, that's good, isn't it? It reminds me, right, of a story from the 1980s. There was a geezer called Terry Boyle. And he came up through the ranks and, that, and made a lot of money in the 70s and was a millionaire early 80s. But he lived right in a, on a council estate and he had a, a semi-detached house and he had more extensions on it than you can believe, a swimming pool and everything. And I asked him once, I said, Terry, why don't you live up Dyke Road where the lovely houses were with all the beautiful great big houses? He said, because I'm a big fish in a little swimming pool here. If I moved up there with all the other rich people, I'd be a little fish in a big pool. And that's what I think it is. So, as I say, it would be interesting to see how long it stays up. I mean, I don't mind to keep it up there as a banner thing because I think it's the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. It's the most humiliating thing because the pendulum swings right from gung-ho back to the centre status quo. Now, right, we give up. Honestly, right, they started a battle last night and ended it last night. Honestly, you can never believe it, can you? They marched up, right, honestly, right, here's the battle, the Lord of the Rings, right, we're all together, we're now going to destroy our hostage and Zoe. Two hours later, they pick up the white flag and say, that's it, it's all over, we don't want to fight anymore. <laughs> we weren't even involved, but we didn't even contribute, honestly. 
It's like starting an argument in an empty room. Hang on a sec. I'm just going to use the bathroom. So, where are we now? What are we doing now? <sighs> so anyway, I should bring this one home. We've nearly done three hours. Okay, and we've just critiqued what happened and talk about right a damp squib, talk about absurd nonsense. We came under attack briefly last night. It was the most weakest attack because it started at the beginning of a live. Four hours later, they raised a white flag and said, right, we don't want any more fighting. So where do we stand today? Who knows? Of course, I understand that, Zoe, it's right. They hate us because we don't have the diplomacy required to believe complete and utter lies and nonsense and to allow someone to force their personas and constant talking about themselves on us. And that's why people get annoyed with Zoe Gilday because she doesn't suffer fools gladly. Right, she don't suffer fools gladly, right? And it don't matter who she... Right, and, and you give me an example where she's ever been wrong. It might take some time to filter through, right? But what you give me, please give me an example of when Zoe has ever been wrong on any of the people, right, that what we've done, what she said that the people are, right? She's just spoken... Right, what she believes is the truth, and what happens, it turns out it is the truth. So anyway, everyone, I should bring this up. Oh, and just a few little things, right, listen. Right, it doesn't hurt to be polite, show respect. 
And the fact that I say at the end of an episode um, or a live, Zoe, is there anything that I've left out? Is there anything you'd like me to add? Is common courtesy. But no, they're trying to twist it to say that shows, right, that I do exactly what Zoe says. And it's complete and utter nonsense. It's a joint effort. We discuss things on here. You've seen it in the last couple of weeks, especially on those brilliant lives. That's another reason, Zoe. Right, we were getting the momentum of the lives. They were being really good lives. But that's all right. I'm prolific. So we had one or two days where we talk about things, but we get back on track very quickly. And to be honest with you, right, Zoe has cleaned out the closet. No, exactly. That's the whole thing, Zoe. But that's all people can throw at you, right? Um, there are certain people who throw that at you to attack me, but other people you have personally destroyed, right? You've destroyed certain people's credibility on YouTube and social media. Right, and they scurry off with their tail between their legs, right? There's a period of time, a bit of clear blue water, and then they come back onto um, YouTube, and then they try to ignore Zoe because they know that, that, that she destroyed them, completely destroyed them, their credibility and everything. She really did. And then all of a sudden they get so obsessed, they then want to go after her and use a 1,000 accounts or whatever it is. They've done that to me. And yes, Zoe, don't forget as well, you are getting blamed for those 132 comments on the other live the other day. You're getting blamed for that when we all know what happened was two days previous, someone came on here that you put in time out for 24 hours. Right, and I never followed it up by blocking them. They then flooded the comments right on the live at the end of it. I removed those, right, and blocked them. The following day came the 132 comments, and the references to the screenshots of 1600 means that it was the same person. The account was made that day. But no, they've got to blame Zoe for, do for doing that. They also said, right, that Queen Bar and Zoe are the same person. For goodness sake. Honestly, I don't know where, honestly, where, how their brain works. Well, exactly. Zoe says, I destroy fakes, attention seekers, liars, the types that try to, that, that try and do here what they do on other channels, but they get a shock to find out we don't tolerate it down here. Exactly. We've seen them come and we've seen them go. We've seen them off because we, you know, uh, see, look, if you're going to come in here, you've got to be a bit credible. You've got to have something to say. You can say, oh, I think this, I might not be putting it right or whatever. There's not a problem with that. But also the attraction of this channel now, you see, that's why I knew this was coming. I didn't know when, right? The attraction is because we keep going on the fact about it being ring fenced. It's right in the middle of enemy territory. You can't get in. You've got to wait 14 days. And if you make a snidey comment, you're gone. So they didn't know what to do. So all of a sudden they just gathered the troops and that all just went disastrously wrong. So anyway, I'll bring this one home. Thank you, Zoe. Thanks, everyone else. Hit the like, subscribe, you can buy me a coffee at the top, and we can do this all again later on today. But it's Friday night. I might see what happens. But we can also do a burner channel tomorrow night if you want, Saturday night, Sunday morning, maybe. 
If not Sunday, if not Monday, it doesn't matter. We can do it any time we want. So out of courtesy and to be polite, Zoe, right, is there anything else you would like to add before I bring this one home? In fact, anyone in the chat, if there's anything else you would like to add, please do it and I will address it. Is that is that so out of order to say that? So on that note, I shall bring this home. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Quiet Man, John Hayworth, Shay, everyone else who's contributed at this early hour. Vic, who are you, Vic? Right, Vic, not sure about this. Why do you want us to keep directing you to the live? Maybe we should um, put you in time out. No, I'll tell you what, we'll um, block you because I don't detect you've got anything decent to say. I don't know about you, Zoe. I just thought they, um, I, I didn't know that Vic was. Never heard of Vic, have you? Apart from when you get a cold and you rub it on your chest. So let's see where it takes us next. That's the thing we got to do, isn't we? So anyway, I'll bring this home, hit the likes and subscribe. You can buy me a cup of coffee and we'll do it all again later. Shay, sorry I forgot you, sorry. Well, honestly, Shay, sorry about that. That certainly wasn't intentional. I just scrolled up quickly. I didn't go right to the top. But thank you to everyone. And I shall bring this one home now. And this is our hostage signing off.